video, I'll explain you how to validate JSON Web Tokens using Varnish. JSON Web Tokens, or JWT as we tend to call them, is an open standard for storing claims in a JSON encoded format. Basically, a way to store session state or authentication data at the client side by using encoded JSON. So what does a JSON Web Token look like? Well, a JSON Web Token is a string containing three distinctive parts of base64 encoded JSON, each separated by a dot. The first part is the header part, and that contains a JSON object with two properties, one of which is the algorithm, and that's SHA-256 in our case. And secondly, we have the token type, and that's JWT. That will not change, that will always remain the same. The middle section, the middle part, contains the body, the actual payload we're storing and transmitting. Again, base64 encoded JSON object containing arbitrary values. Final part, is an HMAC signature using a certain algorithm. In our case, that's SHA-256, and it also uses a secret key, which makes it cryptographically secure. By reading that and verifying that signature, you can ensure that it's not forged and that it's authentic. What makes JWT so useful? I have four reasons for you. Reason number one, it's self-contained. That means the token doesn't only identify a session or the session data, it also contains all the actual session data. That means that you don't have to do costly round trips to the backend to recover session data or authentication data. Reason number two, it's language independent. JSON is a universal standard, base64 encoding as well, so that means any other language can interpret it, unlike other sessions that are application specific. So that means you can issue a JWT in PHP and you can interpret it in JavaScript, or in this case, in this very video, you can even do it via Varnish. Reason number three, Security. Base64 is not the most secure encoding format, to put it lightly, but there is a security measurement in place in the JWT standard. The third part of the token, the signature, is that safeguard. It's an HMAC signature that uses a secret key that is only known by the issuer and the validator of the certificate. Other than that, no one knows it, so no one can reproduce that signature. This means if the signature doesn't match the expected value, it's a forged request and we should deny it. Reason number four, portability. Because it's an encoded string, we can transport it using HTTP in any way we see fit. I would advise you to either store it in a cookie, a dedicated token cookie, or as a bearer authentication token in the authorization header. So where does Varnish come into play? Because this video is clearly about JSON web token validation using Varnish. Well, Varnish is a so-called reverse caching proxy, a service that you install in front of your web server and that caches HTTP responses coming from the backend and storing it in memory, serving them to the client upon subsequent requests. By doing this, you avoid unwanted and costly connections to your backend servers. And by doing this, you take away the load from these systems when the heat is on. Caching dynamic pages is not that difficult as such. Let's say we have a PHP script that serves data from a MySQL database. Caching that output is pretty trivial. But if the output that is generated differs per user, it gets a lot more difficult. Storing this so-called user-specific data, make sure that the page is more or less not cacheable, and that is not a desired situation. Even if we do decide to cache, we'll be caching output for a specific user that will be broadcasted to other users, and that is definitely not the way to go. And that's where JSON Web Tokens come into play. The Varnish configuration language that allows you to define the behavior of Varnish can handle JSON Web Tokens. It can interpret the signature, but it can also extract specific information from the payload. It does not work out of the box. You will need an extra Varnish module or a VMod, as we tend to call it. VMod Digest is what you need to make it happen. VMod Digest offers us two benefits. Base64 decoding, which we will need to interpret certain data, and also HMAC, which we'll need to verify the signature. If you're working with APIs and you store the JSON web token as a bearer authorization token in an authorization header, you will need to examine that header and extract a token from it. You can do that using any other regular expression. And in Varnish, the regsub and the regsub all functions allow you to do that. This piece of VCL code showcases how JWT can be interpreted in Varnish. As you can see, I created a custom procedure called JWT, and that processes all the information regarding JSON web tokens. The first thing it does in this example is extract a token from the token cookie. We do that using regular expression functions such as regsub all and regsub. Once we have that token, we need to divide it in three distinctive parts. We need to validate the header, we need to validate the signature, and if that is correct, we can extract data from the payload. 
we use base64 decoding functions in varnish to extract the data and then it's just regular expression magic to extract specific properties and their respective values the first thing we do is check if the algorithm is sha256 and if the token type is jwt if that is not the case it's not a correct jwt token and we just return an error next up is we prepare uh, a set of headers temporary headers that we'll remove at the end that extract the payload and the payload will then be base64 decoded and values can be extracted and stored in custom HTTP requests. But we also need to match the verification part. So what we do is we take the third part, we base64 decode it and extract uh, the token from it. What we do then on the other hand is create an HMAC signature using the same secret key with which the token was issued. So if that matches, we have the same signature and if the signature is 100% the same, we're dealing with a valid JSON web token and we can proceed. If that is not the case, it's a forged request and we should return an error. So that's a security precaution that Varnish brings to the table. And after that, it's just a matter of retrieving the data you want. In this case, there's two values we're extracting, X login and X username. X username is the username of the logged in user and X login is a flag that is either true or false. And that is a, a flag that identifies whether or not a user is logged in or not. So from within our regular VCL flow, usually that will be the VCL receive part, we can call the custom JWT procedure, the custom subroutine, and extract its information and use it to make certain decisions. A common decision that has to be made is, is a user authorized to access this page? Let's say we have a page that we identify as being private and we notice that the custom X login header is not set or is not set to true. That means the user is not logged in and from within Varnish, we can immediately redirect that user to the login page and make him authorize himself. So that's the impact of JWT. By doing it at the edge side, so at the Varnish side, we avoid these costly calls to the backend and we make sure that these decisions can be made without causing extra load on the system. And there's even more to it. Uh, if we use JWT, we can cache the pages, but we can also create cache variations based on specific values coming from JWT. In our case, it's particularly useful to do a cache variation based on the value of X login, so that you have two representations of a specific page, a version for non-logged in users and a version for logged in users. And that makes it very, very convenient. I would suggest you have a look at my demo application, which is linked right here. It's a GitHub repository that has uh, a project called Cacheable Websites. It's a PHP product written in Silex, and it showcases some of the HTTP magic that you can use to create uh, cacheable sites using Varnish. The version 2 branch contains JWT authentication and JWT session storage. We use JWT to identify if a user is logged in or not, and we use specific values from JWT to perform cache variations and to give multiple representations of a page. So check it out. That was the video. Thanks for having a look. Thanks for bearing with me, and until next time.